Welcome to the Creators here at Sum City. Coming to you every Tuesday and Friday. Extended conversations that build community making for creators videos, by creators. Art, making what you make. Today on the Creators, Seacoast musician, vocalist, guitarist, Carol Coronis fires us up with her energetic blend of Balkan, Middle Eastern, Celtic rock, and American roots. So subscribe to our channel, comment, and most importantly, watch Building With Us as we build community with you. Good afternoon, everybody. Uh, welcome back to beautiful downtown Summersworth, New Hampshire for uh, another episode of The Creators right here on Sum City. And uh, I'm Tom Jackson. Nice to see you again. And uh, with us today, we have uh, a musician who uh, is uh, an, an area musician, uh, but uh, whose repertoire is uh, really amazing and, and really global. Um, and so welcome to The Creators, Carol Coronas. Thank you, Tom. It's good to be here. Uh, it's great to have you. And why don't we start off, um, you know, I, I know that you are from a musical family, actually. You know, we've had, we've had some other musicians on here, and quite often it, maybe they started playing music when they, you know, saw the Beatles on Ed Sullivan, or if they're, you know, uh, in, in the younger generation, some other band inspired them and they picked up a guitar at some point. But you've been, you've been playing music for pretty much your whole life, is that right? Mm, yeah, I'd say so. Yeah, when I was a little kid, well, my dad was a musician, so uh, there was always music playing in the house. He was a Greek musician, he was a jazz guitar player, Greek bazooki, played a bunch of other instruments, pretty much anything he could put his hands on, an ear player. Read and wrote music, but he was an ear player, and uh, I kind of got that from him, I think. I didn't realize it for years, though. But I loved music, and when I was a little girl, I would, you know, my parents would put me up to our little, our, our real piano, actually, and so I would plunk the keys, and you know, like a little kid, you pound on the keys, okay. Then they got me a little tiny toy piano, which was horrifically out of tune, and I knew that. And I kept whining and complaining, and they'd put me up to the piano again, and as I get bigger, um, I started taking piano lessons, and I liked the fact that it was kind of like a drum, and you could also make notes, too. So very percussive instrument. I loved it, and um, I was a Buddy Holly fan when I was a kid. My dad liked Buddy Holly. I didn't like children's music. I didn't like pop music. I said, well, what's that kind of music that Buddy Holly plays? Rock. Rock? What rock? What do you mean rock? Rock. So it took a while. I said, rock and roll, and somehow that made sense to me. And um, anyway... Uh, Played in, um, yeah, play, I played my dad's band for about 10 years in high school and college. My brother was a drummer, is a drummer. He's three years younger than me, and we performed together a whole bunch. But yeah, it was kind of the Beatles that got me going with a guitar because you can't carry a piano around. And um, I think I learned to play guitar, and of course my dad taught me, and I, I just ate it up. I loved it and been playing ever since, well, till about early, late 90s, early 2000s when I discovered another instrument. So you, you played in your dad's band and what mm -hmm. um, what style of music did your oh. dad's band do and you know where did they play? Yeah, Greek dance music. We played a lot of uh, weddings and functions. We played a lot of big hotels, play a lot, um, like huge weddings, 500 people weddings in, in some of the big hotels in Boston and we played locally. We played anywhere, Maine, New Hampshire, Massachusetts. Didn't travel too much, but we seemed to be playing almost every weekend and it could have been a Greek function or an American function and he kind of covered both, both of that. It was a lot of fun. A lot of the Greek festivals played those too over the years long time ago yeah so that was that was kind of the beginning of the inspiration of the the incredible diversity of, of the yeah, yeah definitely definitely and and the kind of Greek music I liked was the music that sounded well more Turkish more Arabic rather than some of the Greek music like never on Sunday a little bit too Americanized for me I like the belly dance music I like the different time signatures the seven eights the nine eights and of course, a lot of the Tsiftiteli, the um, Tsiftitos, which is a nas national dance of Greece. Uh, Tsiftiteli is a belly dance, and Tsiftitos is circle dance, also belly dance too. But I like that. I like that music. And then, of course, got to college and 
discovered well discovered Jefferson Airplane in high school actually and then uh, college you know was the Almond Brothers Santana and um, anyway discovered Irish music a bunch of years later and uh, now I play anywhere from Greek Middle Eastern Turkish to Celtic to a rock and roots and a little bit of blues now too and how many different musical instruments can you play um, probably anything with strings except the fiddle I play and my, my main instrument is a sittern it's kind of like a mandolin on steroids a ten stringed instrument I have several of those two are made by Nottingham Luthier Bob Abrams and those are wood and teardrop shape and the instrument I'm playing now it's well it was my dad's first guitar it's the body of a 1935 National Dulian steel guitar and Steve Rowley from York turned it into a citron. Made a beautiful neck, beautiful tailpiece too, but that neck's killer. It's solid as a rock. And the neck that was on the guitar for years was in pretty bad shape. Couldn't get anything past the third fret that was in tune. So he made a gorgeous neck for it, and now I have a, a steel queen. Steel queen. Yeah. I, I like that. Sort of a combination guitar citron. It's a citron, yeah. Well, on that note, let's, uh, uh, if we could get you to uh, do a, a song uh, using the Steel Queen right now, and everybody can have a look and a listen. So. Sure, that sounds like fun, definitely. Start off with something Turkish, probably. Mm -hmm. I'm going to do a Turkish song called Rampi in 9-8 time. The dance is a karselma, and it's going to kind of rock for you. <laughs>
outlandish thing going on. How about rain falling on my roof, the tax men taking our money, and let's put the tea on to boil. Yeah. So after playing with your dad's band for 10 years, mm -hmm. um, you know, I, I've, I've known you for a while now, mm -hmm. and, and uh, I can remember that there always has been that sort of Greek music, Turkish music, that sort of element. But you've you've added a lot of other styles and mm -hmm. and uh, sort of genres and and you know cultural styles um, over the years. Mm -hmm. So uh, can you talk a little bit more about uh, you know by Middle Eastern what are we what are we talking about? Uh, yeah, well, pretty much anything that um, has to do with the Middle Eastern modes, which are slightly different from our musical scales they actually take if you take the major scale and you flat the two and the six of the scale you've got a greek major key or a middle east uh, a make them or a middle eastern mode and then for the minor scale they'll take the they'll sharp the four and they'll sharp the uh, seven and then you have a, another minor key so i, I just kind of you know i i, I kind of have to think about that I don't, I'm not conscious of it when I play it. I just, I just play the keys, play the modes. But the songs, um, a lot of the songs originated in Turkey, whether they're Greek or, or not. And that whole region, the Greeks in Turkey brought their music with them. It was the Greeks in Turkey. They brought their music with them. And in the early 1900s, that was the Rumbetica music, the Greek blues. And, but Greek music, Greeks have, you know, music has been, their life, they use it every the party, funeral, there's music. And um, so that whole region, you know, the music kind of overlaps in, in a way. But I, I just kind of know a lot of the Greek traditional songs and um, then the um, Greek more Lyco music or popular music that was started to come to vogue in the 50s and the 60s. There's a, there's a lot of that that's that's um, played by a lot of the bands today that I still do as well. But I my passion's always been rock and roll and roots music and that's kind of what I've evolved to now along with the Celtic. So I play, you know, I play different different um, different different genres of music for different different functions, different affairs, things like that. And so and speaking of, uh, you know, sort of more contemporary uh, uh, gigs and so on that you've, that you've got, uh, I've heard you tell a story about, you know, where there was a little bit of a transition um, from, you know, doing some playing out, but then uh, I think it was uh, Gary Straczynski who, uh, you know, a, an encounter with him, uh, and uh, you kind of attribute that to, you know, a little more growth in terms of getting more involved in the back music in, scene locally. Back into the Greek, that's right, yeah, because I'd been playing um, been playing in the area, not Greek music, and um, Bruce Pink, well, actually, backing up a few years here, it was around 2001, I started going to the press room, press room sessions in uh, Portsmouth. Tom Hall found out that I played an instrument called the cittern, and he invited me to a Friday night session and I loved it. I had a ball and he invited me back. I kept going back, went back for years and would be going now, but we've been in exile for almost a year now while the press room is going through the renovations and coming back stronger than ever. But um, he, he, had, uh, he had introduced me, of course, to Bruce Pangry and Bruce heard me a bunch and uh, Bruce was putting on a production at the Portsmouth Music Hall, I think this was back in 03, called Backbeats of Portsmouth and he had asked me to play a 20 minute set of Greek music. I said okay. And how this came about was on Friday nights I'd play one or two Greek songs. Once Tom found out I played Greek music, he liked that idea and he, he, liked, he wanted to hear at least one song every Friday so I'd come prepared to play a Greek song for him and that was fun. Anyway, uh, Chuck and I did our set at the music hall. It was wild. It was crazy. We had a blast. It was, um, we got a great reception. And uh, when I came off the stage, <clears throat> this guy picks me up and twirls me around and says, we got to make you a surf. And it was scary. I had no clue who this guy was. And meanwhile, Bob Frost, David Bem, they were two members out of the seven-member angel band who went on just before me that night. They played um, that concert, too. And Gary, by the way, was the first act. He and Bill Zecker 
were on stage and when I saw them I just wanted to turn tail and run out of there they were so good <laughs> but um I had a ball it was fun and anyway I got to meet Gary so he asked me to come on his uh radio show and he kept saying that whole night that whole night when he met me you've got to make a Greek album you got to Greek make a Greek album this is the last thing on my mind I I was playing Celtic music I loved Irish music hadn't played Greek music since a long time ago so uh, anyway, Chuck and I did learn four songs for that night. We had a ball, and I ended up going on the polka party the following week. Gary invited me on the show. And yeah, never having been on a radio before, <laughs> of course now, but I, I was a little bit ap apprehensive, and I, I walk in, and I see there's this band in there. Oh my God, he's got a band in there. Well, that's kind of cool. It takes pressure off me. And I start looking at the members, and I go, oh my God, I know most of these guys from Manchester. And some of them I taught with my mother, and one of them was the uh, twin of a friend of mine. How bizarre. So right away, it was so cool, and um, I had fun. I played a song, and, uh, and then um, Jack Beard had asked uh, my brother and I to make an appearance on a folk show that February. So things kind of took off from there, and then during that year, Chuck and I kind of practiced. I got some songs together, and we got the album going after that, which kind of took a while to do a variety of uh, reasons. But I have to thank Gary for that whole thing. <laughs> that was funny. Nev never would have, never would have um, gone back to the Greek music, I think, after that night if it hadn't been for him. But so we did. And how about uh, you know other uh, other musical influences, whether it's local people or uh, or you know, national, international acts. Uh, who who do you consider your inspirations? Yeah, I guess I got to go back, and of course, there's always Buddy Holly, you know. But when I uh, was in high school, I discovered Jefferson Airplane, and I just loved their music. I love the way it sounded. I like the way it sounded, and then of course it was Carlos Santana and the Southern rock band The Outlaws and I I just love the guitar work and I love the drive and I love the power behind their music you know what it sounded like all that strength and uh, so you know been numerous others over the years also but I'd have to say for uh, Greek music obviously my dad but um, he was also a fan of Manolis Yotis, a phenomenal Greek bazooki player, passed away right before 1970. Interesting, he was born March 21st and died March 21st, 50 years later, this particular bazooki player. But he brought the bazooki from six strings to eight strings, very innovative, and he wrote a lot of the um, really coolest pop songs, Greek popular songs, I should say, from the uh, 50s and 60s to this day. But the guy's, uh, he's a killer. He's killer on bazooki. So between him and my dad, I was hearing those sounds in my head, and I'm not sure, you know, how they evolved over the year, but they, they, they come out somehow when you play, you know. And I just love all the Irish music I've, I've been listening to. Gerald Trimble is one of my favorite Saturn players, although he plays some Irish. He plays some... Um, his own stuff, and he plays uh, probably whatever's in his head, too. And then there's um, the Lyra players, uh, Ross Daly, who's from Ireland, came to Crete when he was, he's in his 60s now, came to Crete in his 20s. And he and his wife, Kelly Thoma, they're both phenomenal Lyra players. They play what's in their head, and what comes out is amazing. They were at the dance hall over in Kittery a couple of years ago when I got to meet them. And their music, you can't describe it, but it's it's modal and it's all their own. And they're not necessarily trying to preserve any particular traditional style. But if you ever get a chance to listen to them, those guys are in my head all the time. Amazing stuff. Yeah. Well, on that note, uh, can we get you to do another song? Sure. This next one's a little bit of darkness. Darkness. Here we go. The Youngbloods, Jesse Colin Young, an anthem to the Vietnam vet. Take my hand 
So, like a lot of musicians who I know, um, you're involved in a number of things. You know, you've got your solo work mm -hmm. that you do, and mm -hmm. as you said, you know, sometimes you might do a gig where you're doing mostly, if not all, Greek music. Sometimes mm -hmm. it might be some other style. Mm -hmm. um, can you talk about some of the other bands that you have been involved with, uh, you know, either in the past or, or the present? Well, a long time ago, I was in a band called the Whitfield Band. This was up in Ashland, New Hampshire, it was probably back in the 80s. That was a lot of fun. We did a bunch of cover stuff. Then there's in rock bands throughout the years, um, <laughs> playing all kinds of crazy wild music and having all kinds of crazy wild times. And then um, coming to Portsmouth, played with a bunch of Irish musicians and uh, really, 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 really loved that a lot. And then I decided, well, I think I'd like to try some roots music. Um, so currently, I'm working with Tom Richter now on a project of some of our own stuff and some traditional stuff. And we're recording down at EJ Ulet Studio in Byfield, Mass. And we're just putting the finishing touches on our eight song EP. So. And these are originals? Uh, three or four of them are, I think, yeah. Tom's written, yeah, Tom wrote two of them. So two are his own, one is written by Steve Codd from Dover, New Hampshire. He wrote the words to a song called Tavern Girl, and I wrote the music to that. And we're doing uh, another song, 40 Bucks by Jerry Tillett. And then the others are the uh, more traditional roots songs, public domain, all that. <laughs> so some are, yeah. And uh, other bands or collaborations, either oh. presently or possibly in the future? Oh, let's see, trying to think. Um, play well oh yeah well my brother and I play the Greek music together and sometimes we'll have you know Bill Zecker join us Bob Halpern's joined us too I really like his work on uh, the guitar he gives it kind of a nice rocky rocky sound we get a dueling citron guitar thing going on there when we do and um, played a uh, played a gig up at Chapel in Maine with Jordan Terrell Wysocki a couple of months ago that was a lot of fun like, he is a phenomenal fiddle player and uh, he's got a couple of his own albums out too he's working on a bunch of stuff himself he's great and um, trying to think probably forgetting people I'm sure but <laughs> well here's here's a little bit of a, a common um, thread that uh, has run through the different types of artists and and other types of creators that we've had on the show so mm -hmm. far many of them um, have a, a parallel career as teachers, ah, yes. um, whether it's you know part time or full time or, mm -hmm. or what have you. Um, and I know that you have done some teaching uh, in the past. Can you tell us, uh, you know, what uh, uh, I know. Some of it has been music, and some of it's been math, right? Mostly math, other than private students. And oh, by the way, yes, I have. Uh, taught guitar and fiddle, and, and mostly it's teaching songs to the students. When I, I taught for 28 years at Pinkerton Academy in Derry, I taught math. And um, we'd have students find me and say, oh, 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 here's what it is, let me back up 30 spaces. Um, some of my friends from Portsmouth would come in to play at Pinkerton two or three times a year to certain events, like Social Studies Week, um, uh, foreign language week and students would find us and they would say can you teach me this music I'd say sure so we meet after school a few times during the, a bunch of times during the year actually and learn songs teach them uh, it was mostly Celtic at the time Irish songs a lot of Irish songs some Scottish so we would perform at the theater in Pinkerton and um, have a lot of fun with that and then I left in 12, 2012, and I've been teaching math. I'm an adjunct over at Great Bay Community College. I love it. It's a ball. I love the students. I kind of feel like I'm teaching for the first time in a way, too. They're pretty, pretty intense, pretty, pretty, pretty driven to, uh, to succeed. And I just, I love what I do, and I love the students. In, in the math class, do you ever combine uh, math and music and teach them like 9-8 time, like that Turkish song that you did? <laughs> I, I've actually had high school students. There was a, a drummer, I don't remember his name. He was in my math class 
and he assured me he could play in any time signature and the kid was right he was an amazing he had a he had a he brought a couple of djembes with him on on one of our for one of our shows and he was right there with me didn't matter what i played 7898 he was right there but not in class now but i do i do have students that are musicians and when i do i kind of like to focus on phi the golden ratio which is uh, another whole thing it's it's basically the ratio or design that the ratio in design that is most appealing to the human eye and it's also found in not only music and art and architecture but it's all throughout nature all throughout the human body I could go on for days about it but um, I do like to point those students in that direction they can see the relationships with Phi, the Golden Ratio, the Fibonacci series, which is all related on the piano and, and the construction of an instrument even. It's pretty bizarre. But Amazing. Yeah. So, you know, the, the name of this show is The Creators, and um, while uh, I understand that a lot of the music that you do uh, live and so on, is maybe covers of, of different types, whether it's traditional songs or, or some of the ones that you uh, have been doing here today. Um, but there is still, stylistically, you know, mm -hmm. you sort of have created your own sort of style of, of doing those songs. Mm -hmm. um, what is it that, uh, you know, we, we always ask our guests, you know, what, what is it that, that sort of is the creative driving force for you, what is what is it that inspires you to to keep on uh, practicing a creative art, if you will? You know, it's a good question, and I've always wondered that. And now I think it just boils down to I like the energy. I like the energy that you can create. I like the energy behind the music that you know you're playing. Um, it kind of comes from within, I guess. And when you're playing, you're not really, you know, when you're when, when, the, when the music's going and you just keep playing and you're driving and you're driving, you're not really conscious of what you're doing. You're just kind of, kind of riding with it. And I, I don't know where the sounds come from. They they just come. But I'd say it's it's the energy that that I like, and it just I don't know it. It's like kind of if I play a gig, I'll probably be up till four in the morning. It's just, I'm just going, going, going since. But I, I like the energy, yeah. Um, I know you, you've had uh, one or even two radio shows on WUNH, right, yes. for a number of years. Can you tell us about those? Well, let's see. Back in 2007, actually before that, when I fell in love with Celtic music was about 1999, 2000, and I had um, heard the Trimble intro song tune to the Cayley Show, Patty O'Brien, Scatter the Mud, Arthur Darley's. And I called Roland Goodbuddy on the Cayley Show. He had hosted it for tons of years, decades. And he was so nice to me. He told me who the artist was, told me the album, the CD, and I picked it up, and that was one of the first tunes I learned on a sitter, and that was a beast to play because I'm mostly a rhythm player on guitar. I, I had been up to that point. Um, very strong rhythm, but rhythm, not much lead. And I was just bound and determined to do it. So I, I uh, practiced my head off. <laughs> and a um, bunch of years later, I think, I think I only met Roland once in between all the time, but it was about 2007. And he was thinking about leaving the show at that time. And he was looking for a DJ to take his place, or at least to trade off with him. And um, somebody said to me, well, why don't you do it? I said, I can't do that. I said, I can't. I can't do that. I, I can't talk on the radio. So just to appease this person, I said, okay, fine, I'll do it. So I called Roland thinking he'd say, no, Carol, we're all set. Thank you very much. He said, oh, great, Carol, come on down next Sunday. Oh, my God. So I was terrified that whole week. What do I do? What do I do? But I'll tell you, when I met um, the minute I met him, I, I re-met him again, met him, I, I felt so comfortable and and I decided yeah I'll give this a try and he was the most patient person to train me and um, what I like about that is getting my ears all over the music you just oh man what else can we play this sounds good this sounds good 
So um, I started doing the Kaylee Show. We were alternating every other Sunday, and then I figured, well, heck, there's a big old empty spot after the poker party. Hmm. <laughs> and I thought, okay, I'll do a kind of a Greek, Turkish, Middle Eastern, Arabic show and uh, see what happens. And that's why I ended up doing a GN Connection. That was that following February in 08. And I've been doing the uh, show since. And right now I co-host the Kaylee Show with Bob Knight. And I was so glad that he picked that up. Um, Roland left uh, a few years ago. He had a lot of stuff he wanted to do. He'd retired from his job. And he was over in England a lot to see his mom and his family. And now he's a busy guy doing all kinds of fun things between the States and uh, England. And he's acting in plays, he's producing in plays, and I miss him. Got to see him again. Roland, where you been? <laughs> he just got back from somewhere. But um, anyway, so I host a GN Connection every Saturday, and then I do the Kaylee Show every other Sunday. And again, it's just, just, just getting my ears on all that music. It sounds so good. It's fun. But the coolest thing is if, if somebody calls you and says, hey, you know, I was listening to your show, and I was kind of depressed, and you really made my day. Because I know what that, that's like. I had done that a couple times years ago before I DJed, and it really makes a difference. When you hear somebody on the radio, they're talking, and then they play cool music. Can't beat that. So it's fun. And I consider it an honor that I'm able to do that at the university. It's kind of cool. Well, uh, we've been enjoying the energy uh, here today as well. And uh, so, Carol Coronas, thank you so much for joining us. And uh, can we get you to uh, play us out for with some more music? Of course, and I thank you for asking, too. Thank you so much. Be glad to.